Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Ahmed Ali. I'm the head of gastrointestinal surgery at the Austin Hospital. And on behalf of Salam Fest, it's my great pleasure to extend to you the warmest of Ramadan Mubarak and wish you a happy and healthy Ramadan. This year, Ramadan is going to be different. The COVID-19 or coronavirus situation has fallen upon us and has completely changed our lives. So many of those activities that we look forward to all year to partake in Ramadan, our iftars with family and friends, our extended get-togethers, the congregational prayers, our frequent visiting of the mosque, and of course, that Ramadan-only ibadah, tarawih. All of these things, unfortunately, with social distancing measures, mean that we simply can't do that this Ramadan. But you know, with every hardship comes ease. And with ease, there is opportunity. And indeed, there are perhaps some new opportunities that we might not have thought about in this situation. Our social distancing measures means we now have the opportunity in Ramadan to really pay attention to those closest to us, to those who we're living with every day. In the usual hustle and bustle of Ramadan and iftars and get-togethers, perhaps we don't pay quite as much quality time to our children or our spouses or our parents, even during uh, the blessed month of Ramadan. But now we're all forced to stay at home. It's a great opportunity to really enrich each other's lives in that way, those closest to us. And did you ever stop to think that, in fact, this situation allows us to practice some sunnahs that normally we wouldn't need to practice? You know, even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised us that the sick with contagious disease should not be amongst the healthy. So the concept goes even back to our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But did you know that isolation wards first appeared in Islamic hospitals? In the seventh century, leprosy wards and, and isolation wards for other contagious disease were first used to control outbreaks. And there are many examples from the earliest days of worshippers staying away from congregation when they were unwell with contagious disease. Even the word quarantine has Islamic origins. The word quarantine comes from the Italian quaterna, derived from the, the teachings of the famous Islamic physician and scholar Ibn Sina from the year 900. Ibn Sina recognised contagious disease and advised 40 days isolation to prevent its spread. So you see, what's happening today is not so new. And in fact, the social distance strategies that have been employed have its roots in Islamic knowledge and practice. So far in Australia, these strategies have worked really well. We've been able to stem the tide and inshallah, we won't have the same sort of catastrophes as we've seen overseas. But we need to stay vigilant now is not the time to relax or to flout the recommendations. If we can keep going on this track, it may very well be that we can start to relax things quite soon. In fact, we could even be hopeful that we might be able to extend our gatherings somewhat by the time Eid arrives. If we get it wrong now, it might be many, many months before we could ever congregate in reasonable numbers again. Worse than that, we could be putting ourselves, our loved ones, and the wider community at risk. So please, please, this Ramadan, pray at home. You've heard the saying, stay at home. Well, I'm turning that for Ramadan into pray at home. Pray at home and be a mercy to your brothers and sisters. Pray at home and be a mercy to the rest of the community just as Rasulullah was a mercy to the worlds and have a fantastic Ramadan.